This is the day the Lord has made. We are going to sing, pray, and rejoice in it. Psalms 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Join us as we sing the song, I've got the joy, joy, joy down in my soul. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. song the first is creating me a clean heart creating me a clean heart
sing Into My Heart prayerfully, after which Javon Richardson will take us to the throne. Into my heart. church, dear Lord. And Lord, I want you to guide us as we worship you today, dear Lord. I want you to put your blessing down on us today and let the church go as order. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. with the morning's welcome. Buenos dias, everyone. It is so good to be here today to worship the Lord. As such, I would like for us to all stand and give our Round of applause for the Lord who has been delivering us through this pandemic. Let us welcome Pastor Brown and his wife. Let us welcome the musicians. Lastly, let us welcome the children. Is there anyone worshiping with us for the first time? If yes, please stand. Everyone enjoy the service and remember to stay safe and trust God. Please join us as we sing the hymn, Praise Him, Praise Him, All You Little Children. Praise him, praise him, all ye little children, God is
scripture lesson will be taken from First Colossians 3, reading from 20 to 25, will be read by DeAndre and DeMarco Dixon. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The scripture lesson for today is taken from Colossians 3, 20 to 25. And it reads, Wives, submit yourselves to your husband. Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Father, do not embarrass ember your children, or they will become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it, not only when their eyes are new and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. 25 and last. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there will be no favoritism. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The roads are empty because of COVID-19. Most humans are locked up in their homes because of COVID-19. Nobody is going to school because of COVID-19. Every visitor may be an unwelcome virus. COVID-19 is mean. Let us hear some COVID testimonies from Gavadia, Kitania, and Mardio. Good morning. My experience in COVID-19 has brought a negative and positive impact on me. The negative impact is that I have not attended school from March 13, 2020 until this current day. I was supposed to sit the PEP examination, but because of COVID-19, I did not get to sit it. I am afraid that I won't be able to attend the school of my choice come in September. The positive impact is that I have get to spend more time with my family and also I have learned a new technique of learning. The technique that I learned is online class. Most of all, I miss my school friend, but through everything, God has been there for me and my family. Good morning, everyone. COVID-19 prevents me from going to school and learning. It stops me from seeing my family. I want to go to school and learn, but COVID-19 makes me stay home. But it makes me see, see my, family, my family more. I ask God, I pray for everybody and ask God to heal the world. COVID-19 has impacted my life both negatively and positively. The negative side of the story is with my online classes. With online class, I don't have the understanding of how I would when we would have a more physical contact or interaction with our teacher. I would understand better because I would be hearing better and the little virtual classes we have a day are no good substitute. 
So what I would say is the negative impact of COVID-19 is it is hinder it is it it hinders me from a better knowledge and understanding of what I'm learning to take me to high school. The positive impact is that it has brought me closer to my family, like some of my aunts, cousins, and grandparents, and also my great-grandmother I used to rarely see. Now I see them like every week, and that is good. It helps our relationship. Another positive impact is that it has led me to read my Bible more and pray more. So the positive impacts are that it brought me closer to my family, it brought me closer to my family, and I am reading my Bible more. These few COVID-19 tips I leave with you before I go are wash your hands, cough in your elbow crease, and also pray and keep the faith in God and never lose hope. And the only way we will get through this is if we stick together and trust God. Remember, washing hands is right. Stay home, don't mingle. Isolation is the best way to fight against the coronavirus. Marissa will now come to us with a poem entitled, Children Live What They Learn. After we sing this chorus, Little Children Rejoice. Little children rejoice, for you're a child of the King. children live with criticism, they learn to condemn. If children live with hostility, they learn to fight. If children live with ridicule, they learn to be shy. If children live with shame, they learn to feel guilty. If children live with tolerance, they learn to be patient. If children live with encouragement, they learn to be confident. If children live with praise, they learn to appreciate. If children live with security, they learn to have faith. If children live with acceptance and friendship, they learn to find love in the world. Thank you. Now we will be continuing with the singing of lively choruses. It is time for some praise and worship. Please stand to your feet. I'm trading my sorrows. The first song is I'm Trading My Sorrows. I'm trading my sorrows.
The books of Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers talks about offering wave offerings to God. Portions of the things offered were literally waved in the air before the Lord. Wave offerings were given to God as a show of servitude, peace, and commitment. Are you ready to offer a wave offering to God? Get out something and get ready to praise God. God is good.
today, please feel blessed as the dance group ministers.
The speaker for today is none other than Sister Talisha Plummer. Good morning, church. Let's praise the Lord. We are going to be playing two games first. One of them is called Freeze Dance. So you are going to be hearing a piece of music 
When the music starts, you're gonna start dancing. When the music stops, you stop. Then the music play again, you start dancing, and then as soon as it stops, you start moving. Ready, musicians? Stand up on your feet. still moving down there. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. The next game we're going to play is called Telephone, and I'm going to use these children up here for my assistant. So what I'm going to do is to whisper something in Govania's ear, and then she's going to pass the message. Each person is going to pass the message down, and then Elena is going to tell us what she heard. I have my altar never burn out. Did, did that, did, that's what I told you? No, Come and tell them what I told you. Keep the fire of your altar and never let it burn out. Good. <laughs> Thank you. So both games had to do with listening. Just like both games we played, it is difficult to listen at times. Would you agree? Likewise, people didn't always listen to what God had to say. People today don't always listen to what God has to say. Today, we're going to be learning about a wonderful and amazing thing that God did through Elijah. <clears throat> Elijah loved God, and he was willing to let God use him. Elijah trusted that God would do what he said. God is immutable. He cannot change. He is not deceitful. Anything he says, he will do. 1 King 18, 6 to 21 tells us Elijah was not well liked in Ahab's kingdom. Many people in the kingdom did not follow God and they thought that Elijah was a nuisance. Eli Elijah could have been afraid. Many of us would have been afraid if we were in the situation that Elijah was in. But guess what? Elijah wasn't afraid because he knew that God was on his side. Elijah had a plan to show the people of Ahab's kingdom that God was the only true God. Let us watch a short video on the story of Elijah and the prophets. Phone. 
All right, the technical difficulty. In the video, you would have noticed that Elijah and Ahab's people were going to build an altar. They were told to build an altar. So the people expected that Elijah, they wanted, they built the altar because they wanted to prove who had the bigger God then. Both of them decided that anybody whose God called on fire was the true and living God. The people expected that Elijah would bless the land and pray for rain, but they had another guest coming. Elijah had other work to do first. Ahab and his people were to repent, and they must repent. They had to repent because Ahab and his people were mixing their worship. Sometimes they worshipped God and sometimes they worshipped Baal. Now, boys and girls, Baal was an idol. Can anyone tell me what an idol is? Anybody know who is an idol? Good. Now read from my screen. An idol is anything in your life that is more important than God. So in other words, an idol is making a God out of something that isn't actually God. For example, money, golden images, cars. So those are some of the things we would classify as idols. In the story of Elijah and the prophets, you notice that Baal and his people made an altar, and Elijah also made an altar. What is an altar? An altar is a platform or table used as a center of worship in Christian ceremonies and services. In the Bible, the altar and its utensils were said to be sacred. And the priests had to vest and wash their hands before touching them. Even so much <clears throat> as removing the ashes from the altar. It further states that the fire on the altar was lit directly by God's hand and was not permitted to go out. Who is lighting your fire today? Leviticus 6, 12 to 13 strengthens this point. It reads, and the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay burn offering in order on it. And he shall burn on it the fat of the peace offerings. A fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. You would have noticed in the video that 450 50 false prophets were calling out to Baal to answer them. The Bible tells us in Kings that they leaned upon the altar as if they themselves became sacrifices with their bullock. They leaped up and down and danced about the altar hoping that their dance would please their God. They even went as far as to cut themselves with knives out of vexation because their prayers were unanswered. What craziness. Yeah. What nonsense. Yeah. Obviously, they were ser serving false gods. Yeah. Obviously, they had false hope. Yeah. Even Elijah made fun of them saying, call on your, your God. Yeah. Maybe he's on another journey. Yeah. Call him louder. Yeah. He must be asleep. Call him, he can't hear you. He must be relieving himself. Yeah. Elijah was a comedian, but he knew what was coming. He wanted to indicate that their God was far away and was an unreliable source. Yes. 
On the other hand, Elijah poured special attention to his altar. Everything that was done to his altar was done with care and had special meaning. Right. It was made with a purpose. First King 18.33 says, He piled wood on the altar, cut the bull into pieces, and laid the pieces on the wood. Then he said, Fill four large jars with water and pour the water over the offering and the wood. That sounds like madness. Because if you're going to roast a breadfruit and you wet up the coal and the wood, how if I have a catch? But our God is sovereign. He controls everything. Bible scholars explain how symbolic each part of Elijah's altar is or was. He used 12 stones, one, of, one for each tribe of Israel. Elijah's altar of 12 stones represent hope for the future. The trench is symbolic and foreshadows Jesus' crucifixion, death, and resurrection. The bull on the altar represents Jesus. <clears throat> Elijah's placement of the bull on a piece of wood can be seen as a symbol of placing a sacrifice on a wooden cross. When Elijah had four jars of water poured over the sacrifice three times in a row, it represented the act of baptism. Also, the water poured three times represented the three days that Jesus was in the tomb before his resurrection. Yes. Elijah's trench around his altar not only served to hold the water that was used to soak his sacrifice, but it functioned as a method, a method to turn many people from the worship of Baal to God. As soon as Elijah called on God, Instantly, immediately, a blinding flash of sizzling energy bolted from the skies above down on the altar. The people were screaming and moaning in fright. Everything was consumed, even the wet wood. All that remained was a pile of dust that had once been the 12 stones. People were on their faces crying out with their heart that Jesus is God. Amen. Don't you think Elijah was brave to stand up to the 450 false prophets of Baal? This simple shows us that even though they were stronger in number, God is infinitely stronger. He is bigger. Jesus, bigger than what people say. Jesus, bigger than what people say. I hear them talking. I hear them running up their mouth. But you're bigger than what Jesus say. Oh, you big so. Oh, you big so. Oh, you big so. Oh, you big so. person in the Old Testament built an altar at some point. An altar was built by Abraham after he arrived at Moreh and after God spoke to him. Noah built an altar immediately after he disembarked the ark. Moses built an altar and called it Jehovah Nissi, which meant the Lord is my banner after they were victorious over Amalek. As kings and priests of God, we must keep the fire burning. We are the spiritual altar being built now. So how can we keep the fire burning? To keep the fire going, the priest had to be attentive. He had to keep putting wood on it daily to ensure it did not go out. Likewise, 
The same kind of attention is required to keep the light of God's Holy Spirit alive in our hearts and our minds. A fire left to itself will eventually go out. Ne neglect prayer, neglect Bible study, neglect the Holy Spirit, then it will become dormant. Given time, it will simply go out altogether. To keep your altar burning, we have to work on it. We must pray without ceasing, pray night and day. When we pray, we must repent before God. And secondly, if we want to keep the altar burning, we must study the word. The, the fire won't fall today unless we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. The fervent love of God burns among people who have given up everything to be his disciples. Do you want to keep your altar burning? Every Christian needs to build an altar at home for God. Amen, amen. It does not need to be fancy. Yes. However, we must be careful of placing items to worship in front of it because it can become idolatry. Use your altar regularly for prayer requests, spiritual warfare, thanksgiving, and to connect with the Holy Spirit. As I close, I want to encourage us not to let the fire of our altar burn out. Keep your altar burning. Just like Elijah, I pray that our hearts will be changed. I pray that our altars will be set on fire. I pray that our altars will keep burning and that we will proclaim that the Lord is God. Amen. Children, God wants to use you to do wonderful things. You're not too young to be used by God. What Elijah did would have been impossible on his own, but he did not do it on his own might nor strength, nor power. He relied on God's spirit, so it became possible. Hallelujah. Elijah's altar was set on fire. Amen. If you want your altar to be set on fire, you must be prepared. If you want to keep your fire burning, you must be prepared. If you want God to use you, you must be prepared. Stand where you are if you want God to prepare you, just as how he prepared Elijah. We're going to sing, Lord, prepare me, and the pastor will take over. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. I believe with all my heart that God has spoken. It's time to worship. It's time to worship. God's daughter through the word of God said, wherever God's men went, the first thing they did when God gave them victory was to build an altar. <laughs> are you understanding what I'm saying the Bible said the men of God when God came through for them 
in order to show their appreciation and thankfulness to God they built an altar the altar was the place of solemn worship to God right where you are I wanted to make it an altar I wanted to say to God I wanted to say to him right now prepare me Lord I want to be a sanctuary I want to be holy I want to be true I am building an altar today because I am going to make my life a life of worship whether at school at work at play at home at church wherever i am i'm gonna make wherever i am an altar of worship the bible said as the altar was built as sister tally said it was time for prayer because when you build an altar it's not enough something must follow the building of the altar and that is the reaching out to God on that altar are you ready to place on the altar yourself I place you at the highest place for you are the great high priest I bless you Worship at his feet. Let's sing it again and give God thanks. Oh, I place you. Place Lord, we place you on the, the highest place. Yes, Lord, worship is yours. Oh, worship is you yours. Are. Worship is yours. You oh God. Worship is going to break oh, down the altar of the enemy. You. Worship is going to cause praise oh, to be in this place. Oh, Worship, worship, worship. It's hey. going to cause praise, glory, and honor. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Hey. We come, we come to you, Lord, and worship you. Oh, yeah. oh, hey. we, we praise you. At the highest place. the great high priest we place you long high above all else oh, oh my God as we come oh Jesus worship worship and right now I want you where you are is there somebody here in church today you have never surrendered your life to Jesus before but God has been so good to you and like Elijah and the children of Israel you are believing that it's time for you to build an altar in Europe and worship God wherever you are I'm going to ask you right now would you reach out to him would you make him this solemn promise and be prepared to keep it Lord today the last Sunday in May I will always treasure this day because I am rekindling the fire 
I am building an altar. And God, this altar is symbolic of my worship to you, God. I'm not going to take the fire from off the altar. I am going to allow you the fire from you to burn on this altar. I want to begin now, Lord. I want to begin now. Maybe you want me to pray for you wherever you are. Maybe the fire on your altar is kind of getting dim. COVID-19, it's separating you from church. Maybe it has caused your altar fire on your altar to be kind of burning out or burning down. You want today to rekindle the fire. You want today to rekindle the fire. The altar is not broken down, but the fire is going out. Do you want to rekindle the fire today? Or do you want to start an altar? Place a fire on it. And by the grace of God, let the Holy Spirit keep the fire burning. Burning in your life. So that the fire in your life, so that the fire sparking out of your life can spark out and touch others, can reach your neighbor, can reach your community, can reach your church. The fire sparks in your life can burn for Jesus Christ. As I begin praying, I want you, wherever you are, I want you to pray likewise. Wherever you are, somebody needs Jesus in this place. Somebody's fire needs to be rekindled. The fire is getting out. Something is out in your fire. It seems as if your fire needs to be reignited. That is your praise. That is your passion for Jesus Christ. That is your desire to serve God. It's symbolic of the fire. Is your fire growing dim? Thank God it can be rekindled. Elijah said, poor. And he prayed to God. And God gave the fire. Father, in the name of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I am feeling very convinced and led in my spirit to pray for somebody who's the frustrations of life, the anxiety, the fear of life is causing their fire to grow dim. They are confronted with fears, with difficulties, with frustrations. And these like water is trying to put out their fire. But God, we are glad that the altar is still there. The altar is still there. What we're asking you for, God, what I'm asking you, is that thou hast caused them to replace the wood on the altar that is of prayer that is of hope that is of trust may they replace the wood on the altar and God is true that soon as their fate God is replaced on the altar Lord like the wood May they now ask you, Lord, to send like Elijah fire. Oh, Spirit of the living God, demonstrate your power. As the asking come up to you, Lord, by those who need fire need to be rekindled. Oh, hallelujah. May the fire of love May the fire of unity, may the fire of oneness, Lord God. <laughs> Jesus. 
Bring it back, Lord. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. The fire of love. The fire of unity. The fire of oneness. Oh, hallelujah. Burn out, Lord. Burn from the altar. Everything. Everything that erodes love. Everything, Lord God, that erodes unity. Everything, Lord God, that causes confusion. We pray that thou burn it from the altar. Set heart free this morning. Holy Spirit, as of Pentecost, Jesus, send the power just now. Send the power just now. And God, before the power, send the fire. 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 Somebody shout fire in this place. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Somebody shout fire in this place. Somebody shout fire in this place. Somebody shout fire in this place. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus sent Pentecost in this place. Pentecost burn out carnal weakness. Pentecost burn out hate. It burn out malice. It burn out hate. Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask that thou, like the fire of Elijah, it would suck up the water of hate and malice and grudge and envy. We want to shine again, Lord. Lord God, it is not COVID holding us down. It is our relationship. Rekindle love again, God. Remember those who have not yet surrendered their lives to you. But they have come to church today to say thanks to you and to join in worship we ask Lord God that thou clear their hearts clear their minds rid them of sin even as they would ask you to do God may there be our own confession on the part of those who have not yet surrendered their lives to Jesus may they say like the songwriter just as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me and as thou bids me come to you oh love of God I come I come we're glad that you forgive sin we're glad that you cleanse we're glad that you deliver and set free so we say thanks to you Lord for the fire we say thanks to you for the altar we say thanks to you Lord that an altar is built to worship and the fire is sent to remove every impurity and anything that would stop the blaze of the fire may our church be the church of excellence where love is concerned May our church be the church of excellence where forgiveness is concerned. Oh, Spirit of the living God, why are you talking to me? Telly has already given the message and my spirit is lifted. Oh, our church will be the church of where brothers and sisters are one in the Lord. Our church will be the church where unity and brother would prevail our church would be the church we are outreach not just by what we say but the way we live at home and among each other may the church be the church may our church be the church of, of compassion reaching to mankind and all human beings 
oh God, in their time of needs, may we be compassionate. May we care for them, even as we would care for ourselves that we want others to care for us. May our hearts be open to share what we have. And we commit to you, the government of the land, and the opposition, those who stand to guide us through this trying time. We commit to you today, once again, our frontline workers who are giving up almost on their health. They are risking their health almost their life oh god for us all we pray that you would cover them provide all the gears that is necessary for them but more than all god cover them with your blood we pray for doctors nurses we pray for those in uh, the place where they have to test blood and take blood we pray for the radiologist. Lord God, we pray for the ward workers. We pray for the community health aides, oh God. And all the other categories of workers in the medical field, oh God. Support staff, oh God. We ask you for them. We pray for security force, God. They are stretched to the limit. There has never been a harder time for them. COVID has come, but the murder rate, God is something else. God, please cover Jamaica land we love and cover the people who are standing up for us. We pray against the gunmen and the gunwomen. We pray against the mothers and fathers who are, who are also perpetrating crime because they are supporting their sons and daughters. We pray against them. Hear our prayers, God. Oversee us, Lord. We pray for our children. Some of them will be returning to school. In a couple days time, cover them, Lord. Those who will be taking exams are going back. Cover them, Lord. Some other school may be opening. Cover them, Lord. Cover children, cover teachers, oh God. Cover helpers in the school, whatever category. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you would cover them, Lord. And allow that we would do what is necessary to be done in order that we may have our safety. Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones among us and outside of us. Comfort them by the comforting of thy word. And Jesus, we pray for special anointing and blessing upon Talisha. Lord Jesus, I know the time she spent preparing these little children I know the time she spent hallelujah and the prayers that she has prayed as she prepared for this morning I am glad you have come true for her you have been opening doors for her oh I rejoice in you Lord <laughs> you said no good thing will you withhold from them that walk uprightly you said wait upon the Lord be of good courage wait I say upon the Lord be with us throughout the rest of this day and crown us with your peace and blessing. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
as we close the service, we want to remind you, Wednesday evening, we will again be reaching out to you. And I don't know, I've asked Sister Brown to assign families are doing our prayer meeting. But this week, there will be prayer meeting. And we are going on the platform that you're accustomed to and everybody do have. What's up? Please, go to your page and be part of the prayer. Classes, please remember, have your class meeting even online. A lot of your members, reach out to your members. They need you not only at church, but while they are not able to come to church. Please remember, the Lord loves you. He cares for you. Thanks to the musicians. And thanks again to Sister Tally and her team who have really led us in worship. Oh, hallelujah. We are, we are in the closet.